Welcome to our uh, Monday Night Shi'ur. Tonight is a very special night. Every night is a special night, but it depends how relative we are. Um, it's the Hilula, what's known as the Hilula, Avram, is one of the greatest Rishonim. The first ones we call them. The first ones. <clears throat> but before we start our shiur, it's important to uh, have acknowledgement the people who allowed the shiur to, you know, take place. May the shiur have the the power of the Torah that we speak, the rare Torah. I call it. This shiur has rare Torah in it. It's not just stories of inspiration and do good. This that is this is rare Torah in here. <clears throat> So may Hashem give bracha and haslacha to the anonymous donor. May she have a lot of haslacha, bracha, bracha, zivug, parnasa, shefa, haslacha. Amen. May she have a lot of uh, simcha. Amen. And the bishut that she, you know, believes. Mida keneged mida. Of course, everything will work out. And the second uh, sponsor, may Hashem give a easy labor to Shoshana Bato, uh, Bat Shalom. May she have an easy labor and the child should come out. Amen. Bari v'shalem v'takin v'bari. Amen. So back to what we were saying. Tonight is the yard site of one of the greatest Rishonim. Now, we're a generation that we're used to... Uh, you know, fast pleasure. Everything, there's no patience in our generation. Kids, everything has to be instant, right? The mic, before it was the microwave, hmm. then it became the television, and everything is instant. The iPhone, then the Mac, then the, everything is instant. There's no, there's no waiting. What has the fastest download? What uh, can you see? What, what can you do faster? What has the greatest stock? You know, there's no patience. So therefore, the problem is that, especially people who hear learn Osrat Chaim, we know that the Hishtal Shiluto Olamot, everything that happens in the Olamot, didn't happen right away. Everything happens slowly and gradually. Correct? Look at the Jewish people. We've been 1,900, I believe this year is 51, 52 years in Galut. And it took 1,952 years for the Jewish people to get to this this spot where there is close to 1 million, 2 million Shomrei Shabbat out of all the Jewish people. Now you say, what's 2 million Shomrei Shabbat, 1 million Shomrei Shabbat? In the time of Shlomo Hamel, they didn't even know what Yom Kippur was. Look, open up a book of kings. Then, yeah, King Solomon's time, where he built the Beit HaMilash. They didn't even know what Yom Kippur was. Today, once a year, they have something called Shabbos Day. You know Shabbos Day? It's a worldwide event where everyone just decides to keep yeah Shabbos prize, keep Shabbat. You hear that? You never heard of that? No. Did you? Hear, you never hear? It? I'm gonna make sure that. Just for yeah. Shabbos and we all be free. Exactly. Yeah. There you go, guys. You got. Shabbos you have the. <laughs> all right, we got it, Avram. <laughs> we got it. We got it. <laughs> so, in our generation, do you know? Though from two million or one and a half million. It jumps up to 5 million. Now, that's not the whole number, obviously, but 5 million Jews keeping Shabbat. Wow. Now, imagine, now multiply that by all the mitzvot, the Chabad, the Shluchim make the Jews do. You wear tefillin, you, you put Shabbos candles, and all the Shi'urim, and all the, all the organizations. It's, this is a, you are living, I'm telling you, without exaggeration, in the name of Rabbi Udaftai, I'm telling you this. That this is the generation that has kept more Torah and Mitzvot than any generation from the time of Dora Midbar. When they came out of Egypt till today, this hasn't been a generation like this. I'm telling you, that, exactly, they saw God. So, we had, did you see God? No. We see God's actions and we see that there's no coincidences. Why do they merit? Because they were Kadmonim. They were the earlier generations. The earlier you are, the bigger your nishama is. The bigger your nishama is, the bigger your kli is. The vessel. So he could comprehend Hashem if Hashem reveals. 
But then I want to tell you one thing that I've seen. Wait a second, Avram. I want to tell you one thing. It's written that Hashem will never reveal Himself in the same capacity. Not that He will never reveal Himself, himself but in the same capacity that He did in Har Sinai. It will never happen again in that capacity. Do you imagine the generation of the, 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 the left Egypt? Unbelievable. And you know what Rabbi Akiva says in Masechet Sanhedrin, uh, Parakut Aleph? Jonathan, you know what he says? That generation has no Olam Allah. Wow. That generation? That generation has no Olam Allah. Dor de'a ein le'em helek le'olam haba. And we're sitting over here drinking uh, whiskey, beers, you know, some good uh, lamb steaks, and we're here to learn Torah. You guys have Olam Allah. You know why? Because you did it without comprehending Hashem. Can I tell you a secret? If you would ask a sign from Hashem, Hashem, God, use Kevavke, the mighty king, the one and only, make me something that's not possible. One in a million. You did it though, you asked. And it happened. You think after that you're going to serve Hashem better? Nope. You're going to feel good. But you're not going to serve Him better. You're not going to do what you have to do. The fact that they, that they comprehended God at Har Sinai, that even a shifcha, you say a shifcha, a slave, a maid servant, a she saw, she comprehended God, Abraham, with Yechezkel ben Buzi. Didn't comprehend God in his marot yichesker that he saw kisei akavod. That is a media wa wa wa. Rabbi Akiva, you know who Rabbi Akiva is? All your Gemara, Mishnah, Shulchan Aruch comes from who? A friend, Rabbi Akiva. You know how kind of good rabbi he was? You know kind of how kind of merciful rabbi he was? Can I tell you? Once one of his students, he had twenty four thousand students, got sick. He closed his yeshiva. He said, I'm not going to tell my students because maybe they're not going to want to do it. I'm going to go myself, Rabbi Akiva said, and visit my student in while he's sick. He had a fever. Back then, people used to die from fever. He went over there. What did Rabbi Akiva do? He wasn't a doctor. He cleaned the house. He washed the windows. He cooked him a little breakfast. <laughs> and suddenly, the, the guy, the student... Yeah, he got up and he was healthier. Rabbi Akiva said, whoever doesn't visit the sick, the fact that you visited him, it's as if you give him life. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And we're sitting over here, and I'm telling you guys, I'm not exaggerating. This, has, this is... If you listen to my older lectures of people who are seeing this and I'm telling you as a fact, this is one of the, one of them. This is the greatest generation in Torah and Mitzvot since the Jews came out of the Midbar, since they came out of Egypt and Mitzrayim. I'm telling you, the tests that we have are unbelievable. No generation has ever suffered our tests. The Yetzer Hara is in our pockets. It's here, it's here, it's mamash, right here, right here. Yeah. To the fact that some rabbis say whoever has an iPhone cannot be an, a witness at a wedding. Why? Because when he goes into the bathroom alone, he has a problem of yichud, being alone with it. And that thing, you could find all the avi, avodatuma. Uh, some rabbis didn't even say that. Why? And what, in some ways, they're true. Now I'm going to tell you something. Daniel, in the last couple of weeks, we have heard a lot of bad news. It's not a coincidence that it happens one after another. People that we know that defeated cancer suddenly fell. A person who was a Baal Chesed, suddenly we hear bad news about him. That he used to support rabbis. That what, what overcame them? Today I heard somebody overdosed. That's what you told me. Sunday. And Sunday. Overdosed. What is happening? 
every Jewish community has an ozone layer. La Marshall. It has a protection. When we weaken that layer, that ozone layer, that Selim. Chasr Shalom. But the one that Hashem loves, that's the one that Hashem gives to Chicha, rebuke. <coughs> and Hashem takes the best. The best he takes. What is the meaning to us? I'm telling you the truth. I may sound fanatic or radical when I say this, and I try not to say this kind of stuff. There is some kind of a form of avodah zarah in our generation. The iPhone, let's call it a necessary evil. It's called Instagram. Mm -hmm. I call it the I call it the egil hazav of our generation. And there are people that call themselves Jewish. And I call them Erev Rav. I call them Erev Rav and Amalek. Amalek, I call them. That they train the, the youth of our generation with their posts. And they make themselves sound Jewish. And they come up with all these kind of sigulot. They have to use a Jewish, uh, you know, a Yiddish kite vessel. vessel to make it sound kosher. The pig... A pig, when he wants to, when he wants to make himself look kosher, what does he do? He spreads his hoofs out. I mean, look, I'm Jewish. Look, I'm kosher. Look at me. But he's pork. Even the Arabs don't eat it. And they come up with all these Instagram channels with 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand followers, and they have these kind of uh, sigulot. If you read a certain thing for 40 days, a miracle happens. Imagine Daniel would come up and say, I wore to fill in for 40 days. And, uh, you know, I made money today. <laughs> it became a sigula. I'm, I'm doing mitzvot for a sigula. That itself is a vodazara. You're doing it because you were commanded to do it because you're the only person who could do it. You do it because Hashem asked you. Your creator said, I need you. You're not doing it to be rich, to be... Uh, uh, what is this nonsense? And then they use it. And they say, female only. And girls watch this, young girls. And, and, they, and they become, you know, they go off the dare. It seems like it's kosher. It's not kosher. It's not Judaism. Yitzav Hashem et ha-bracha ba-asamecha. God commanded the bracha. What's asamecha? That's simcha, Jonah. What's asamecha? Asamecha in your closed bundle. Bracha only rests where modesty is. You know, I used to learn in the kolel. They used to pay $2,000 a month. Just for learning. Learning Torah. All day, from 10 till 6. Just to learn. The first call that fell in Queens was that call. Yeah. Why? When you're too much, oh, I'm amazing, I, I offer the best deal, we're the best place, this and that, that's what falls first. Because hmm. it's not about the kesef. The same guy that gives you the 2,000, he'll give it to you to the other place. And that's the meaning of the Gemara that says, the food that you pay for Shabbat, Hashem says, Levu alai vani porea. It's a Gemara. Unbelievable Gemara. Hashem says, No, I give. Loan. Take a loan from me and I'm going to pay you back. You're taking a loan from him? A loan? And, you, and, he's, and he's paying you for that loan. You hear that, Jonathan? You're taking the loan from him? That means, I want to send my son to a good yeshiva. That it cost. Hashem says, "Levu alai vani porea." Take the loan from me. It's not going to come out of your your paycheck. I heard from somebody in this bit Knesset. He told me, the second he stopped paying tuition for his kids, for yeshiva, that's the day he lost a couple of clients and he stopped making that money. You think? That it's coming to you because you're the best. 
I don't know, whatever your craftsmanship is, whatever your, well, your omanut is, you, you're so good. Actually, I'm just, who gave it to you, that guy? Who gave it to you? No, I gave it to you. I gave it to you for a certain reason. If you don't need it anymore, I'm going to take it away. And I'm going to tell you even more that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is involved in our everyday life to the point where he's so involved that even when you put your shoes and you tie your shoelaces, he's involved in that. Do you know how you know? Hashem says, when you put on your shoes, put your right foot first, left foot, tie your left shoe, and tie your right foot. Why does he say that? Because I care how you put on your shoes. Why would he care if he's not there? If you cared for something, would you have some hidden camera, this and that? You're leaving your kids home with a babysitter. You want to know you, you trust her, you don't trust her. You put some kind of hidden camera over there, see what's going on over there. There are people over there, you know, by the, um, by the goyim, you know, I don't want to say stories that happen over there. You want to know what's going on over there. Hashem says, I want to know how you put on your shoes. What do you care how I put on my shoes? I care. I like you so much. I want to know that you're doing it right. That's unbelievable. I'm washing my hands. And I'm putting the... Okay, so I, I mixed up the bread. I did one, two, three, one, two, three. And, I, and, you know, and when I washed for bread, I did one, one, two, two, three, three. What's the big deal? Hashem says, I'm there when you're... When you're washing, when you're washing for for bread, if I, I I care. I'm there and I want to know what you're doing. I'm checking, but I'm I'm a there. I want to tell you guys a story that I heard from my rebbe in high school. He used to teach us halacha. I I only had the zuchut to have him one year for halacha. Half and uh, he doesn't teach anymore. He had it for three years. We were in different classes for. It was a big class. Right? It was a big class. We had, we had a lot of kids, right? Yeah. So I only had him for one year. I think it was twelfth grade. I had him for Allah. He had a saying, guys, and this was a very controversial saying for Litvak Yeshiva. Gehenna is a big place. You know, today we we don't talk about Gehenna. It's taboo. We're not allowed to talk about it. Unfortunately, today is the Orta Rabbeinu Yonah. Rabbeinu Yonah says, if you don't know the punishment. How are you supposed to keep it? This is one of the main ideas in the books of a Gate of Repentance, Shari Tshuva. Okay, but say there, no. I'm not going to answer that. One time we were learning uh, Halakha. So uh, the Rav, Rav Hachberg, Mashem him give him long life. He told us that if we don't comprehend, I remember it's like yesterday. What are we losing out when we're not doing a mitzvah? Then how are we supposed to get to at least level one? Level one. Level one. That's it. Look, all we're asking is to get... We want to be in the game, you know. You want to start. Not, we don't want to start. We want to be, you know, five minutes. We want to have some play time, you know. Like in the game, you know. We don't want to be on the bench. At least five minutes could we get at the end of the game could be a level one. What happens? The people that they say, you know, don't talk about gay no, don't talk about this. Rav Zilberstein, the Rav of Ramal El Hanan. This is one of the main mistakes in his book, Alin al Shabek. I'm not making this up. Check this out. Sefer Berry Sheet in his book Alin al Shabek. He says the one of the big reasons kids today don't want to keep trying to be taught because we don't want to talk to them about gay now you don't have to take it like a, a vat of boiling oil and pour it on top of them. You don't have to do that. You could say, you know, the Pashtun, Yesh Din, Yesh Dayan. There is a judge, and there is a and there is an execution. What's it, what's it? There is a consequence to your actions. But the punishment is mercy. Because the Torah says, Kiet Hashem, Hashem The one that Hashem loves is the one that He will rebuke. If you don't love your kid, you're going to forget about him. But when you love him, you're going to slap him once in a while. Hello, I'm still here. That's what you should tell him. You know why you can't comprehend that? He's still under the six, he's still six feet under. He doesn't understand what does it mean to care for a zulat. To care for somebody. I'm not going to take a lot of our time tonight because we started late. Tonight is the Yorzeit of Rabbeinu Yonah Migronada. 
I remember in our shul once came uh, someone, you remember? And he was looking for a special perush of Rabbeinu Yonah, Shari Tshuva. Remember the book that you got? You don't remember. I'm going to remind you after. <laughs> Rabbeinu Yonah, anybody here knows a little poskim, this and that, is the, is the ne- you remember now, is the nephew of the Ramban, Nachmanides, and the Rebbe of the Rashba. <laughs> Heaven knows a little Pokemon that's enough to put you on the floor. And he's... And the Ramban used to talk to him with a lot of respect. And in the Chida's book, Shema Gidolim, he says, Ashrei is, is, Ashrei praises the one that learns the book, Sha'arei Teshuvah, the gates of repentance. This is a very important book. Listening? There yeah. This is a very important saver. A very easy read. If you know Hebrew, and they, I don't, this translation is a bit tough. I'm sure they already came out with there is, better. There's an, art school one. there's an art school translation. It's not for but art school. You can't go wrong. Even in this, you have a Russian. It's one of the greatest books you will ever read. It, it puts down and not in a long way how to do teshuva. We need teshuva in our generation. There's a lot of bad things happening in our congregation. In our community. What do we do? Abraham. What do we do? We repent. How? How did he write this book? Daniel, how did he write this book? We don't have to go that far. In his time, there was a rabbi. His name was the Rambam. Rabbeinu Moshe ben Maimon, the great Maimonides. And he wrote a book that was very controversial for his time called The Guide to the Perplexed. Moren mm-hmm. Evuchim. The Guide to the Perplexed. The Guide to the Perplexed. If you're not perplexed, then you shouldn't read the book. Very philosophical book. Rabbeinu Yonah <laughs> Alright, take it easy <laughs> Rabbeinu Yonah What did he do? He was so upset at this book The guys were perplexed wow. He went on a A mission <laughs> To burn This book From Am Yisrael Johnny, where are you going? This is for you. Where are you going? He went on a mission to burn this book. And he was very successful. <laughs> Specifically, the problem was with the Morin Nebuchim. And people would burn the books of the Rambam. And because of Rabbi Yonah, this is what legend says. It's not about hate, it's about doing what's right. And at that moment, he thought that's what was right. That's why he did it. But at the moment that he knew that he conceived, when he saw the Mishneh Torah of the Rambam, he said, This Rav is not. He took the whole Torah Shebaal Peh and he made it applicable to every human being in this world. He read Moran Nebuchim again, and he said, for some people, this is whoever, that's why he called the guy to the perplexed. If you're perplexed, it's for you. It's for you. If you're not perplexed, it's not, <laughs> it's not for you. Is everybody, almost, almost everybody confused? Yeah. No, you're not confused. You're not confused. I'm confused. You're not confused. If you're confused, talk to me afterwards. <laughs> we don't have to get to the guy to the perplexed. You're confused. You're not perplexed. <laughs> It's a different word, by the way. Rabbi Nuyona, because he was so sorrowful because what he did to the Rambam, he went on a self, self-inflicted uh, galut. And he wrote a book. 
for what he did, and it's called the Gates of Repentance. And that's how we have exactly the revelation of Hashem. Remember, we talked about the revelation of Hashem at the Nefila. Town to town and telling them, listen, guys, it's not what it seems. Rabbeinu Yonah, the Rebbe of the Rashba, the Rashba, you know the Rashba is? The Maran Beit Yosef calls him Amut HaOlam, the pillar of the world. Maran calls Rashba, and he's the Rebbe of the Rashba. And the, and the, and the uncle of the Ramban. Unbelievable. And here was Shari Teshuvah, out of, he had so much, Regret what he did that he wrote a book and this is not even actually the whole book. We don't have the whole thing I'm gonna tell you a small story. I owe my life to this book Whoever listened to end the shiur I guess a little personal inspiration. Yeah, I owe my life to the Savior When I was in uh, College I'm not gonna you know in my level, you know I wish I didn't go, I wish I did go, what was the difference? Hashem has his own reasons to reveal what he needed to reveal. I had some friends, and we, you know, we used to hang out, this, that, and the Torah was not really my, um... It was, it was you know, the Gemara and Brachot says, don't make Torah your, your avodah, don't make it as work. Make it techanunim, it has to be something that you do out of want not out of because it's your habit unfortunately for a good one maybe even more than one year torah was not my hanonim it was just because you know it was habit everyone did it so i'm gonna do it too I had a very close friend and he was uh, not the best influence on me we were very close and uh, and uh, you know when you're in the world of Klipa today you're with him tomorrow you're with someone else so he had a new friends and I was secondary. secondary I didn't have anything to do I didn't have Torah because Torah was not my priority at that time and a time came <coughs> And I wanted, and I didn't have a certain thing. I said, uh, let me do a mitzvah. Not because it's a habit. Because it's tachanunim. I want to do something. And uh, I found a book in my father's library that didn't belong there. It was borrowed for many years, let's call it. There was a library cards. I decided to take the book and return it to its right owner. Mitzvah hashavat. Aveda told today I'm very particular about this mitzvah I took this book and I walked for about 20 to 30 minutes I walked for 30 minutes even more I returned the book and I came back and I felt very good we don't we don't appreciate the mitzvah until we're disconnected from it from a long time right once you're away from someone Absence makes the heart grow fonder. It felt good. So I said, you know, for the first time in a while, I'm going to open a safer and I'm going to, I'm going to learn on my own. There was no netzach, no organizations back there. You were on your own. What was the book I was looking for? Guide, uh, Misad Yesharim. I was looking for Misad Yesharim. That's what we learned in Yeshiva. I was in high school. Hashem made it in a way, for some reason, I couldn't find it. We at least had 10 or to 20 versions of that book in our house. For the life of me, I couldn't find a book. What book came to my hand? Sha'arei Tejuva. That's for myself. I cannot <coughs> learn this book. It's from the Rishonim. It's from the early Rabbanim. I cannot. So I'm going to read it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows that I'm saying the true story over here. You see, this is what's written in his tombstone. They have a real picture of it. Rabbi Yonah Migronada. 
It was written on his tombstone. I didn't get to the sixth line and it changed my life forever. There was no inspirational lectures. There was no, uh, you know, miracles. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, I'm giving you the lifeline. Take it. That lifeline was Shari Teshuvah Rabbi Niona. It's my first time doing a remembrance for Rabbi Niona. It's a very emotional thing for me because people say today we became religious from this one, from this one. The main point, and I say this to people, is not to find Judaism from the outside. Let it be an awakening from the inside. Not it aruta del ayla. You don't want that. That uh, fizzles out. You need it aruta del tata. You need aliyat man. You need to be from within. But even that within comes from above. Rabbi Chaim Vital, when he was first becoming close to the Ari, the Ari said, I'm not teaching you no more. You didn't want to come to me? For six months I'm calling you, Rabbi Moshe I'm not going to teach you anymore. He went home, started to cry. He knew his mistake. He felt it. He started to cry to Gleish Baruch Hu. I recalled him the next day, he said, when you talk to Hashem, don't talk to him as if he owes you something. Because even that thought in your brain that says, let me do teshuva, you know who signed off on that? That's what the Ari told of Haim. So don't come to Hashem with cheshbonot. Don't come to Hashem with calculations. Because even that thought was came from a source from Akadosh Baruch Hu. It was manifested from some. I really recommend once in a person's life to finish his book Gates of Repentance. Once in a person's life. I don't know what translation is it back in my day it was only the Feldheim translation. Today he's saying Fast Fast is also the art scroll. You know I call it uh, hard English Versus uh, easy English. Modern English. Modern English, exactly. Well, this is the hard English? This is the hard this one. Is the hard one yeah. yeah. How about I? The sincerity that you get from reading Rabbi Yonah, because he wrote this book while he was doing Teshuvah. He wrote, that's when he wrote it, because he caused the Rambam's books to be burnt, as legend says. And that's when he wrote the Sefer. I'm going to tell you one last thing, what Rav Nachman of Breslev says. I think it's in Torah, Torah Vav, the Ikrat Yoshua, the sixth one. He writes, a person has to do teshuva, Gavriel, because of his teshuva. You have to do teshuva on your teshuva. You got to do teshuva because that's the way you do teshuva. And every day you do teshuva. And that's the meaning of the pasuk. Shov yom echad lifnei mitatcha. Come back one day before your death. Every day has to be a day before you go. You never know what happens to people, guys. Today we see, I don't know what comes in our community, such kind of tragedies. Where is this coming from? We need to be mechazeket atzmein. We need to strengthen ourselves. We are over here. We're a small group over here. We are mecha. We are mechazek, the ozone layer of our community. You think what's coming here is nothing? If Hashem wants to be there while you're tying your shoes, how much more so when, how much more so when you're learning Torah? May Hashem bless all the bracha, v'aslacha, parnasa, yeshu'ol, v'chol melechein, 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 v'chol melechein,